Yeah, again, thank you so much for the interview. Um, and first, congratulations on the album. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, um, I've been I've been a huge fan since since the whole thing started, and um, I have enjoyed the dying option ever since the the album came out. Um, let's just dive into the album first. I I cool. wanted to ask you about the album title, um, the dying option, because of course the album is very emotional, very personal. I will dive into that a bit as well but can you tell me about the album title a bit sure yeah uh, well, i have a cousin called Pelle. he uh, he used to have a band called the dying option back in the days maybe almost 20 years ago yeah. that i loved i love that band he uh, he's very good with words he, he even invented the uh, magna carta cartel name he invented a puppy marriage's name like that because it's a pun you know you're not mm -hmm. supposed to be mm -hmm. married i called him and asked him if we could use the title for the album because it sounded so much like a james bond movie like yeah, uh, yeah. yeah you know like uh, the thing with the name of the uh, well the phrase uh the dying option is that it's it's got a couple of different meanings to it like it can either mean the option of dying or the yeah. uh, or, or or like an option that is dying like the door closing on you so i like that or we like that and um and it went pretty well with the uh very simplistic artwork that we had in mind for the album so yeah you know. yeah that's uh that's very interesting and uh regarding the process of like the the recording of the album i heard that you had some some difficulties or challenges with the album uh and yeah. that you wanted to start over or something could you could you tell me about the the recording process and the songwriting what was different this time for example uh with with respect to door compared to the previous album did you did you try anything different what what were the challenges that came with it well uh, we did have like difficulties recording the album or i mean i Met, I mean, some of the songs are so old, like Sleepy mm, on June. Yeah, I wrote yeah, yeah. that in 2009, I think, and then a demo of it leaked. So everyone have heard the demo and they're like, it's not the same. And you're like, oh, fuck off. It's my song. It's our song. You know, we do whatever we want to. But uh, I mean, and, and Valkyria, that was written. That was the first song we wrote after mm. Good Morning Restraint. So that, that song is from 2006, but we mm -hmm. altered it some. And I mean, so many of this. But I mean, the majority of the songs were for this album was written, maybe they were written between 2015 and 19. That's wow. how slow I work. But mm -hmm. I, we had more songs, some songs that we didn't even end up using on this album because they sounded so much like we didn't want any twin songs. But um, what we tried to do was have a, have more of a... I mean, first of all, we have one instrumental song in reference to The Morning Restraint, which has seven. So we wanted to not necessarily walk away from instrumental music, but because we will release instrumental tracks whenever, but we thought, thought that this album would be more lyrically and vocally driven. And But the heart, I mean, we had a very, very clear idea what we wanted the album to sound like when we started recording. And uh, and uh, we did it ourselves with our friend and producer, Niels, which is mm -hmm. a great guy. You know, and yeah. And he, we had so many meetings before we started to record it, and we started to record it in August of uh, recordings emerged in, in in August of 2019. Went on for like four or five months because we wanted to nail everything like perfectly. And I'm a perfectionist, and I'm you know pain in the ass that way. But uh, so what happened was that come Christmas around 19, we started to mix it, but it didn't mm. sound at all like we thought it would. And I was pissed off, and everyone was pissed off. So we started to mix it for like the room. I mean, I think for a year off and on, I've got so many remixes of that album that you, I mean, oh, God. That, that, that I will never <laughs> again, ever, ever. I like, they're in the box I threw away <laughs> key because, you know, but um, until we were finally satisfied because it wasn't the whole thing. It, it, it wasn't a matter of like experimenting at all. It was mm. like, I mean, we mm. even had the artwork for the album. Everything was ready when we started mm. to record it because we, we had a very clear vision. So, and it turned out good. I mean, to be perfectly honest, sometimes when I listen to the album, which I do, um, I can still hear like, oh, shit, 
uh, we should have done this or that differently. But, you know, you're going to stop at some point. Yeah, of course, you always have. For me, like the the first half and the second half are very different from each other. So the second half for me is like a bit more, you have the instrumental part and you have, it's a bit more experimental in my opinion, but it's just me as a listener, of course. I think everybody will interpret the album differently. Well, I, I, I think you're right, but I it didn't, I mean, we didn't, when we started to record the album, we didn't even have a clear set list. Mm-hmm. Of that. We, I, I knew two things. Arrows was going to open, open, was going to open the album yeah. and the dying option was going to mm-hmm. close it. That, that's the only two like fixed ideas we had. But in terms of that, um, no, I mean, we had, we even, I even sent it out to some friends and asked them, how should we, like how should we distribute the songs over and oh. and you had like some of them were vinyl heavy metal professors and they're like well this song should definitely close the a side and that i'm like well you know and you know so i for good and for bad we actually asked for friends opinions on how to distribute oh, the song all right very interesting yeah yeah and you said the the songs were like from between 2015 and 19 so they were like lying around so to speak and then you recorded them or how how is was how has been the songwriting process or do you just have ideas coming up and you just write them collect them or they like how do you work I, as an artist we, well we usually have like let's say i come with a i have an opening for a song or a sound that i, mm-hmm. I want to make sometimes i take a song from a completely different band and like i want to make a song that sounds like this like uh, i'll use the same skeleton i'll use the same mold for it i'll you know alter all the colors and all the, the actual ingredients but um so usually it's it's just a little small part of a song. It could be a little guitar melody. It could be a vocal line. It could be a drum, mm-hmm. you know, like kind of groove. And then we sit down and and make demos or re, we we seldom rehearse the songs. Like we don't stand around in the rehearsal space and look at each other like what should happen next because there's too much noise. There's too, there's too mm-hmm. many opinions at the same time. So we usually sit down and like discuss the song. Like uh, what should happen here like, by a computer or yeah. sometimes use with a pen and paper. Mm-hmm. Like what should happen here and what, you know. So, but and for me, it's like, it's hard to um, maybe throughout my musical career, I've I managed to finish a song like the same day I wrote it, but this, that's not the way I work. I'm very like, you know, I go back and I alter this and I alter that. And, and, and um, so I take, it's, it, it, that's the way we work at least. I, you know, we sit down and we discuss stuff and like try different things. Sometimes you knew, you know, immediately like this is, this is, it's obvious, you know, it, this and that should happen. It should sound like that. The drums must do that. They mustn't do that or whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, we try and focus on what makes the song good rather than what's, fun for everyone to play at the time because that's yeah. that's not really that's not really helping anyone I yeah think. yeah yeah i can imagine yeah and um it this this is a very emotional album i mean mcc is an emotional i have album. no emotions i'm stone cold i'm the coolest guy in the world <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely definitely i no, mean this yeah. album not emotional at all no, uh, no. Like, it is it is quite i don't know i i have i mean your music is very magical anyway but this, this album is kind of uh there, there is a bit of melancholy it's emotional no. it, it has like is it a personal album for you or is it is it just sort of like interpretation of me let's say as a listener well no it's both i'd say i mean it's a very emotional album for but you know someone asked me earlier today about lyrics and and uh i never sit down with a clear idea like this song is going to be about that or that it's more like poetry I I used yeah. to grab words and sentences and sometimes years later i i, I i'm like oh that was, I, I was trying to say this or that you know like uh but it's very seldom obvious to me what i'm trying to say some of the songs are very obvious like darling that's about yeah. love yeah. that didn't well that, that did what love does destroys you <laughs> you know, yeah <laughs> that's obvious <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well yeah so that was the, probably the most honest like lyrical bit i ever did in that sense and i mean actually sleepy eye june is also a love song but something that happened a long long time mm-hmm. ago that i don't really care about anymore so people are free to interpret it how was it to revisit sleepy eye june for you like Sorry? revisit how was it to revisit the song and re-record it for you it was great it was yeah. fantastic because we we knew all along what it was supposed to sound like mm-hmm. no one knew that but that's like that's how i wanted it to sound if we could have afforded it like afforded or had the means to do it back then in 2009 10 when we recorded the demo but we, mm-hmm. we couldn't i've always wanted to put that one like where it belongs so yeah. like, okay. 
Oh, it was, um, yeah. But, but you know, to answer your question, I'm yeah. sorry, but yeah, it, it's an emotional album. It's got a lot, it's got a lot of emotions in it, and, but it spans over so many years. So it's yeah. not like you know, a month in my, our lives that like was shit. It's, it's years. That was yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's also, music is always, at least for me as a listener, it depends on my mood. Like one song that I that I listen to when I'm in a bad mood could be melancholic. And then in the other moment, it could be, it yeah. could it, depict in a different feeling. So yeah. that's why, I mean, it is it is in a way emotional album, but I also wanted to hear your opinion as as the songwriter and as the band, how how did you feel? And this, this of course, yeah, this answered my question for sure. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. think the whole idea with the album was to be comforting, like kind mm-hmm. of a, like a lullaby for ourselves. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I asked this to other artists as well. I mean, you, you said you mixed the album in 2019, so the pandemic probably did not affect that much but how has the pandemic situation affected you as a creative person as a band were you a bit more creative or was there was this more a time for you to reflect or it, it, did it not affect you at all well actually it affected us a lot in terms of being more productive because i mean most of the mixing work and like re-recording some stuff, re-arranging re, uh, some stuff in the songs happened during the pandemic. We probably would have released the album earlier if it wasn't for the pandemic. So yeah. uh, if, if the pandemic brought something good at all for us, it was the, the time and kind of calm pause to to um, to also not feel stressed to uh, like, oh, we have to put out the, al- the, al- the album tomorrow. Like we realized that we didn't. It was like, oh, fuck it. Let's take some more time with it. And we had fun too, to an extent. After a while, this became like a <laughs> it became like a nightmare because like it never ended. But then we like started to like feel that like uh, we're we're getting closer now to the yeah to the yeah, yeah. yeah yeah. I also guess that because of the pandemic, the album got delayed and delayed and delayed, and everybody was yeah. waiting for something. But yeah, that happened with a lot of bands, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which uh, song or songs have been highlights, uh, in your opinion, from the album? My personal favorite song on the album is called Tamsa. It means ah. darkness in in, in ah. Lithuanian. I I, uh, I have an I have an, an ex girlfriend now, nowadays, one of my best friends, and she she once told me some kind of expression in Lithuania which had the word Tamsa in it, which means darkness. And I was like, oh, that sounds beautiful, and I scribbled it down and. Music. I don't know why, but I like that song because it's so different from the others. And it, it's a very old song that me and Simon, Simon, mm-hmm. that was also in MCC earlier and Ghost, we yeah. wrote that as an instrumental demo maybe in 2005, I think. I have a shitty old demo of it, but it's these two or three guitars. But I took that and I called him up and said, I'm going to make a song out of this. And he's like, oh, sure. Yeah. And, uh, and I altered it and I'm, like it added a chorus. I added the lyrics and I made it into a synthesizer kind of Blade Runner dystopia song. Yeah. I don't know why, but I'm very happy with that one. And the other one, the other song that I really like is called Dusk, which is the, the only instrumental piece, which is more or less nothing. It's just ambience for four minutes. And I, but I, every I time I hear it, yeah. like I get calm and feel kind of comforted by that song. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, ambient music. So probably is... we should just make a, 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 an ambient album next time. Yes, so. I was going to say that. Like, do you, do you have any, because you have a lot of instrumental songns, you said, you have, yeah. you have acoustic songs you have, for example, uh, released uh acoustic version of darling like would you consider releasing uh eps or albums like that like instrumental or yeah i mean we, we, we're looking at we're looking at i think the next mcc album will be like the dying option in terms of having like vocal songs on it for the most part but i think we will release a couple of eps between mm-hmm. you know with more like soundtracky stuff because we've got we've got that in that music in us as well but i don't think i want to release an album that way because it just confuses people and mm-hmm. the ones that want to find it find it anyways and you know but, but it, um, it's hard because we've got so many influences and so many ideas and it's hard to pin it down to present to someone like um uh, come listen to my band and they're like yeah what is it and you're like mm. well it's a little bit of everything and they're like oh well i i don't like everything and you're like no but i do and you know and after a while it's just hard so we try to with this like dying option and probably the next album is going to be very it's going to be a lot more focused and in, in terms mm. of like uh so they have even though the songs of dying option are very much apart and diverse from each other they still have something that glue, glues them together mm-hmm. i don't know if it's the vocals or the uh, production or whatever um i don't know yeah you that know. sounds good yeah I, people like categories in general that's true it's uh i mean so do i 
So yeah, I, everybody does. Even though, like, I listen to everything, for example. But even, yeah, you have a point there. So it's like when you say, okay, we make everything. People still want to hear. Okay, but like, what exactly? Like, what do you focus on? Yeah, so, yeah, 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 right. yeah. Um, yeah. I associate your music with the sunset or sunrise a lot. So it's like either when the sun goes up or sun goes down. Do you have a specific time of the day where you are the most creative or does it change like are you a day person are you a night person when it comes to i'm 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 a night creature of the worst kind i'll tell you i i, really? I can't. no no i'm i mean i mean i can easily sleep until three or four in the afternoon uh-huh. you know and i think it's because i've got such severe adhd and uh-huh. i'm so fucking all over the place and i believe that in the night time when everyone else is asleep so to speak that's when i can focus on my stuff in the daytime, you know, the phone goes off, the, uh, you know, there's yeah. social media, there's ideas, I see people everywhere, and I cannot focus. So yeah, I'm definitely a night guy, but sometimes, like a, a month, a year or something, I'll try and turn it around, usually by staying up all day, like all night, and just not go to sleep to, to become a morning person. And I love that because I get so much more done if I yes. have a normal routine, yes. which is just horrible. I never learned, but that's the truth. That's the truth. That's true. Yeah. That's really interesting to hear. Yeah. yeah. Your music is also kind of like, like a soundtrack music, definitely. Yeah. Um, if you Thank would you. like, yeah, especially instrumental songs, they are very, pretty much very, very soundtracky in a way. And if you would like, um, write a soundtrack to a movie or a tv show what what which soundtrack like what movie or tv show would this be oh i don't know but i, I would like for it to be some kind of drama a very slow and and kind of you know like michael mann well you know mm-hmm. like the guy who did heat or the last of the movie kids well he's done kind of action movies too of course but he uses music in a way that i like because he brings in you know, which he even did in miami vice in the 80s but he brings in like a full song in the show and people are used to driving around in their cars and you let the music be the uh, narrator of, of, of the, uh, the scene instead. And it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. I do like all kinds of soundtracks and movies, mm-hmm. but uh, my favorite thing is probably when it's not like too overtly bombastic and like it doesn't need to be an orchestra full. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be Lord of the Rings all the time. It can mm-hmm. be like, so yeah, I don't know, like some kind of, some kind of a very aesthetical, aesthetical and uh, well-written movie with a uh, kind of realistic and slow dialogue in it. Like that's yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. soundtrack yeah. what yeah. are your future plans so what what can we expect from the band i think you will release a song this friday i saw it's a cover song cool. yeah yeah uh yeah it's a cover song coming out this friday um we did release uh, i mean we did record some extra songs for the session of the album but they were partly uh the uh, the darling acoustic one which is from another thing you'll see that in a while because we recorded like a live thing um, uh with lots of new and old songs but uh and the darling thing is taken from that but uh we also recorded a uh a, a, a cover song of a famous swedish artist mm-hmm. and uh but i i had to take the, we took the lyrics and we asked him are, are we allowed to like make an english version at least ah, like mm-hmm. uh, not a direct translation but kind of a poetic mm-hmm. transcription I don't know. so we'll release that one and there's another one coming next friday as well just to you know to, uh-huh. uh, to not, well because in my opinion if you get, give out like an album of 10 songs that's a lot of music to digest for people yeah, at least yeah. the way i listen to music so i'd rather save some songs and like add them so people actually give them some of the time that they that they deserve and uh i think you got you got this question many times probably but can we expect a tour anytime soon or are you thinking about it or yeah we're, we're now we're, i mean we're in the works and we're rehearsing and everything we, we have mm-hmm. to extend it but we're three people in the band three guys we need to extend the live band being like five guys mm. so we're doing that right now but uh we won't tour just yet not just yet but in a little while you'll see but i cannot tell you anything more right now i'm sorry all right yeah that, that's that's more than enough it's yeah. because I, I i saw you guys 2019 i think it was 18 19 yeah before it's always pre-pandemic post-pandemic for me yeah, uh, it's yeah. really sad yeah it was really amazing and it's like uh yeah it would be awesome yeah. to see you guys live again um and awesome. i have another question actually which which a fan wanted me to ask i think you recorded the footage of the stockholm show from september 2018 is that like going to be oh re- oh yeah released no, I or <laughs> i even forgot about that yeah, we, <laughs> no i did i mean i don't think we uh we never used that did we no we didn't i i think they recorded the whole show with like good cameras and angles and everything but uh 
it's still well. Thank you for it's, reminding uh, me. <laughs> good that I asked this. I, yeah. <laughs> no, actually, I don't think we even discussed that, you know, at, at all. But it doesn't feel really. I mean, it's been four years since that, so I don't really know. I don't really see the purpose of releasing that yeah, because I it just... was just. It was the first show of the, that tour, so we were probably, you know, like a little shaky and everything. But, yeah, anyway. okay. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, all I'll, right. I'll, I'll, I'll pick it up and look at it for sure. Good, good that I good that I reminded you yeah. about it. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, I think I I asked all my questions. Do you have any last words to to your fans? My, my last words. Yes. Well, I don't last know. words. Thanks, thanks for taking interest in our music and art. That's that's about it. You know, because it makes us proud and makes us happy that someone even cares. Yeah, a lot of people care, definitely. Yeah, it seems that way, and it makes yes. us very happy and proud because it's not like we don't take it for granted at all. We're just very happy that people look yeah. into what we. And as a fan, I'm, I can really say that it's it's a very magical and dreamy music. I think a lot of people really, as I said, they a lot of people interpret it in a very different way, and it makes at the end it makes a lot of us very happy. Of course, yeah. I'm happy to hear that because yeah. I'd rather have like make music that people interpret in many different ways than just one way. I don't know. One way, yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Martin. Thank you. Greetings from Hamburg and have a nice week. All Cheers. right. Bye. <laughs>